Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the Morgan's Laws. They're a little bit confusing, so let's try to make sure we make this clear. First of all, here we have what we call a sample space. All the possible outcomes of the sample space are the numbers 1 through 10. Then we have four events. We have A, B, C, and D. Those are called events. The outcome of A, B, and C, and D are a portion of the sample space. So you can see A is a subset of the sample space, B is a subset, C is a subset, and D is a subset. Now notice that you look at A and B and you can see that those are two completely independent events. All the elements in A do not belong to B and all the elements for B do not belong to A. They're completely independent. But when you look at A and C, there's some dependency. Some of the elements within them are the same. And then you look at D. D has dependency with B but not with uh, not with A, but also with C. Now we have another symbol here which means complement. That means everything outside that belongs in there. For example, the complement of A would be all the elements in the sample space that do not belong to A. And the complement of B is all the elements in the sample space that do not belong to B. And if you look carefully, you can see that the complement of A is actually B, and the complement of B is actually A. Okay, now we're also going to talk about De Morgan's laws. De Morgan said that if you do the union of A and C, now what does that mean, the union of A and C? That means all the elements belonging to A and all the elements belonging to C and the elements belong to both A and C, everything combined. Then if you take the complement of that, that means everything outside A and C. So here I have drawn the complement of A union C. This simply means union, that means together. This simply means intersect only those elements that belong to both A and C. Now here, what the Morgan said, that the complement of A union C, so everything outside of A and C, is equal to the complement of A intersected with the complement of C. And now we're going to try and prove to see if that's actually correct. So down here, I've drawn, uh, I've drawn A and C. You can see how they are overlapping. There's some common elements between A and C. Now we're going to draw the complement of A. Well, the complement of A is everything outside of A. So we can do that here. So we go ahead and, and mark out everything that's not part of A. There we go. So now we've drawn the complement of A, and that would be equal to this quantity right there. Now we're going to draw the complement of C. So it's everything outside of C. There we go. Now, what is the intersection of the complement of A and the complement of C? The intersection would be everything that belongs to both. So, you can see that everything outside of A is the complement of A, everything outside of C is the complement of C, but what is the, what is the complement of both A and C combined? Well, you can see that you cannot include this portion of C because that doesn't belong here. You cannot include that portion of A that doesn't belong here. So everything that belongs to A and C has to remain open. So you can see that, yes, if you take the complement of A, which is this, and you take the intersection with the complement of C, if what is in common, basically that's what we talk about, whenever you take the intersection, you're looking for things that are in common. What is in common between those two? Well, that's drawn over here. So we can see that, yes, indeed, by inspection, we can see that the union of the complement of the union of A and C is equal to the complement of A and the intersection with the complement of C. Good. How about the second De Morgan law? There De Morgan claims that the intersection of A and C, the complement of the intersection A and C is equal to the complement of A union the complement of C. All right, let's see if that's correct. Again, what I've drawn here is the complement of the intersection of A and C. The intersection of A and C is this area right in here, those are the only portions that are common. If you take a look at the numbers, what are common between A and C? Well, we can underline them. So 1 is common. You can see that 3 is common. And you can see that 5 is common. So the, the numbers that would go in here, the elements that would go in here would be 1, 3, and 5. So those are common to both A and C. And so the complement of that would be everything else outside of that. And the Morgan claimed that that is equal to the complement of A union complement of C. So let's again try to do that. So the complement of A right here, go ahead and mark everything else out that's not part of A. So this would be the complement of A right there. So this here is equal to this quantity right there. 
Now we're going to draw the complement of C. All right, the complement of C is this area right here. Everything else besides what's in C. Okay, now we're looking for the intersection. Oh, no, not the intersection, sorry. The union, we're looking for the union of the complement of A and the complement of C. That means what belongs to both. Hmm, let's see here. Okay, so what this symbol here means that if it belongs to one and not the other, or the other and not to one, that means it's the union. You put them all together. So whatever belongs to complement of A is all this. Then whatever belongs to complement of C is all this. The only thing that doesn't belong to either this or this is that small segment in here, which means if we do the union of these two, indeed we get that. So everything else besides that area right here, so you can see that this area right here doesn't belong to the complement of A. And this right here doesn't belong to the complement of C. Everything else does either to one or the other. So when you take a union of the two, the only thing that's not covered is that right here, which means this is indeed equal to this, which means it's equal to the right side. So again, by inspection, we can see that the complement of A intersected with C is equal to the complement of A union complement of C. And those are what we call the De Morgan's Laws. A little bit confusing, but if you draw it out like this, you can actually make some sense out of it. And what we're going to do is one more video to hopefully clarify the symbolism of union and intersection to help us a little bit more on how to interpret those two symbols as well. And that comes in the next video.